I was born in Pakistan and I was raised up in Saudi Arabia. And in 2007, I moved to Canada as an immigrant. I got enrolled in the University of Toronto. And I'm graduating this year in June. Um, my family uh, lives here with me. I was living in Saudi Arabia since like, I don't know, I was one month old. So as I was growing up there, I um, never encountered the choice of not wearing a hijab because the society in Saudi Arabia by law has to wear hijab. I actually celebrated the day I was wearing, I started wearing my hijab because it was the day I had to take pull my dad out of his bed and like ask him to take me for shopping and I had to buy the best abaya in the market. And abaya is nothing but a long black dress which I'm wearing. It's black in color, it's like a gown. It's it's very light in material. You can wear what means inside, but I just have to wear this black cloth on top of it so that I my body shape doesn't get revealed is hijab because hijab means to conceal and not to reveal. So abaya is not supposed to be conflicted or misunderstood with hijab and hijab should not be misunderstood with just the scarf. Hijab means, hijab has a lot of detail in it and um, just because I'm wearing a black color, I feel like, you know, I'm less, I'm less prominent in my body shape and stuff. And also the fact that in Saudi Arabia, all females are supposed to wear just one black color and just one style so that, you know, there's a, there's universality. You know, you can't, um, you can't, distinguish between who's rich, who's poor, who's an old lady, who's a young lady. Everyone wears the same thing. So again, there is uniformity, there is universality. Talking about Saudi Arabia and my life there, it was heavens. It was like really nice, it was beautiful, it was very comfortable. Um, I never encountered any instance that made me uncomfortable in public just because I wear hijab or just because I'm a Muslim and just because I'm not allowed to mingle with men. I took a summer off in 2009 and I went back to Saudi Arabia for four months and uh, just to be productive I started applying for summer intern jobs uh, wherever female employment was open and I was hired as an HR coordinator for four months and it was an amazing experience to work there and there was a lot of um, respect um, respect that was being given to me in terms of the whole infrastructure of the work environment like for example in the morning there the the building was 22 stories and there were so many people trying to get the elevator and like you know uh get to work but there was a separate elevator for females only and there were only five percent no, the five percent of the building was females only so i like you know there was this like group of guys waiting to get in the elevator and i could just like walk past them and just take my own elevator and go up the question of not wearing it came into existence when i actually landed in canada you know i was bombarded with lots of questions and then um again i what struck me was when i saw muslims not wearing it because i i i didn't have the concept of not wearing it my parents did not actually live with me um, after we immigrated. They went back to Saudi Arabia and I had to live here by myself. So actually I had all the liberty I had never had now in Canada. When I came here, I saw like, you know, lots of things like you have to wear a brand, like there's Aeropostale, there's American Eagle. I, I tried to catch up with that and I couldn't. I failed. I failed to catch up with this, you know, lifestyle because I wasn't trained to be that, you know, outgoing and fashion and like you know trends well i applied to cn tower with my friend of uh, during the summer and she wasn't wearing hijab at that time and we both called uh, we both got a, a phone interview call and she got called in for a walk-in interview whereas i i was told that since um i preferred to wear my long clock and a long dress i wouldn't be efficient enough to be a tourist guide and i was like what the hell i've been wearing my baya i've been playing volleyball tennis you know climbing stairs going up and down just like you know walking in my by all my life and now you tell me that I wouldn't be efficient enough in CN Tower well I can't I was very sad I was very angry like you know it was just like I had like lots of emotions going on inside me but again I never ever ever encountered the concept of not wearing it for myself I never thought that oh you know what I'm having these barriers and I'm gonna stop wearing it no I just wanted to find out that why I'm wearing it and how do I explain it to them and how do I move on that was my that was my motivation, that was my question. That I have to live here all my life, probably, and I have to move on with it. I'm not gonna leave it. I'm actually not gonna leave it. 
I started studying literature and like books and I started asking lots of questions. I started researching. YouTube was my best friend at that time. And I found out that all the religions ask females to be modest, to cover themselves and to be decent. You know, modesty is like utmost in all religions. And, you know, there was a whole process of like figuring out why people wear it and why people not wear it and why people choose not to wear it and why people choose to wear it. I remember myself um, taking the subway for the first time and taking the bus for the first time or taking the go for the first time and I would actually notice that any man would not just come and bluntly sit next to me. They would kind of try to maintain this physical distance if they see me wear a hijab. Like, and I found that extremely amazing, wonderful that, you know what, I don't even have to you know, um, protect myself like just by wearing hijab. I give a signal, I give a message to a man who I don't know that, you know what, I am a Muslim, I want to maintain my modesty and I want to keep safe distance from you. There's this common saying in Pakistan that, oh, if you're wearing a hijab, you know, you wouldn't get a good proposal, not like, you know, guys won't like you, who's gonna marry you? I wear hijab, I wear my abaya, I live in Canada, and I have lots of proposals from Pakistan and from Canada. Even when we have our, you know, family friends and friends gatherings, we have, I, I find myself very comfortable choosing the best color, the best material, the best way, like the, the hijab that I'm wearing today is a Turkish Turkish style of wearing a hijab and only a Turkish person would know that a Pakistani person is trying to wear their style of hijab. So it, it's kind of cross-cultural too in its impact. So we made sisters in the prayer room and in UTM walking wearing a different style of hijab and we would just like go approach them, talk to them, learn from them how did, how did they wear this hijab and like you know where did they get the material from and stuff. So it's it's a totally different lifestyle I would say and it's it's very trendy, it's very fashionable, it's very comfortable. I'm very content with my hijab. My family is very content with my hijab. I have a sister who's 10 years old and she can't wait to take on her hijab. Like she she keeps asking me like, when will be the day that I start wearing my hijab? And I told her it could be, I, I always tell her it could be today. I'm never gonna force my sister to wear it. Like even if she's 15 years old and that's the first day that she, that's her birthday and she, that's the day she comes up and tells me, Abi, you know what, I'm gonna wear hijab today. I'm fine with it. I'll be more than happy because she chooses it. And then she would respect it and value it more than if I ask her to wear it. A Muslim female has all the liberty, all the freedom, all the choice to follow the commandment or not. If I choose to take the hijab on, uh, it's not that my family is forcing me. It's not that my society is forcing me. It's not that the state requires me to wear it. It's just because my God has uh, commanded me to wear it and I believe in my God. So I have to follow what he asks me to do.